Good morning, everyone. It's day two since I buried my son on the wonderful, beautiful, incredible, athletic, smart, funny, Hayden Hunstable. Um, it's been a been a really interesting road, to say the least. Feelings of guilt, to feelings of anger, to feelings of just incredible sorrow, to feelings of joy that he was going to touch a lot of people's lives. Um, comes in waves, and it sometimes they're pretty big waves that hit you pretty hard. Um, for those of you who don't know the exact story, I want to talk a little bit about it. Um, Hayden was an incredible kid. He wasn't depressed. Um, he wasn't uh, someone who uh, moped around. I um, mean, like any teenager, he was hard on himself at times. Probably a lot, lot like me, pretty competitive guy. Um, and like anybody, had its own his own insecurities here and there. Um, this coronavirus has been a real, real devastating thing globally. There's no doubt in my mind. Um, that, that leaders around the world had a real challenge in front of them, particularly um, in, the, in, the, in light of the fact they didn't prepare very well. I think I posted pretty pretty publicly that the, the lack of a, a true decision tree, decision tree on what to do um, in planning, it was just, it was just astonishing to me. But in the advent of, you know, once the virus got out, um, once it wasn't contained, um, my sense is these politicians jumped to uh, the lowest risk options, which was just to lock everybody down. Um, the problem with that in my mind is, um, is, one, is, is something that I call unhinged empathy. You know, there's a difference between empathy and compassion. Empathy is wonderful in many ways. Um, it brings us art, it brings us poems, it brings us song. It lets you understand and you you internalize the suffering of another individual. But in, in the event of empathy, it creates suffering in you from someone else. It's, it's, it's inward focus. But something like compassion is different. Compassion is love, compassion is outwardly focusing um, um, love and, and, and doing something for someone else, F you know, exuding a feeling of love towards someone else. Um, they actually focus and hit different parts of the brain. Studies have shown that pretty clearly. And um, there's a great book I read and I actually got to meet him at an event years ago by Paul Bloom called against empathy, the case for rational compassion. And what the studies have shown, and I firmly believe is that empathy is not a good, a good mindset in terms of making policy or making decisions. Rather, the, the more logical, the more rational way to do it is through something like rational compassion. And here's an example. If there was a speckled trout here in my dad's creek, Somewhere down there is my dad's creek, beautiful creek. And let's say it was it was in, it was uh, endangered. It was, it was at risk. Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong with wanting to solve that problem. Nothing wrong with trying to take some ste take steps to prevent the extinction of a species, which is absolutely horrendous. No one wants that. But if you empathize so much with the speckled trout that it be that you become irrational, that that everything else be damned. It's, it's no longer something that, that makes any sense. Um, and the same is, it's a rather um, a better way to, to make a decision around what to do about the speckled trout is it, something you know, more along the lines of rational, compassion. Let's be rational, let's be compassionate, but it has to be rational. And with this, the action these politicians took um, created suffering um, and my, my, my fear far beyond and for generations of what is happening with the actual virus itself. And look, I, I'm the first to say that the, 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 the decisions that these guys had to make were tough um, and they're not experts. 
But most leaders, most really good leaders, most historically great leaders were not necessarily experts at their at anything other than how to lead people and how to how to smartly make decisions. Um, there was other there were other solutions here, and this didn't have to happen. Uh, the, the 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 most obvious one to me is obviously if they prepared with testing and and had had some plans in place that would have guided them on what sort of risk to take and and what sort of suffering to allow. We have traded off one group of suffering for another group of suffering. And that's a hard decision that's not lost on me. But God bless, I love my 85 year old grandmother. Um, but why couldn't we just tell her to stay at home? Why couldn't we spend all the money that we're spending on all this economic damage and, can, and dump it all, or dump a fraction of it probably, at the high risk areas, nursing homes, New York City, big, big crowded, big credit institute, places where, where there's lots of a chance of trans, transmit, transmission. Um, to me, there was this full, complete lockdown was, it was, is a, is a joke. Um, and not a joke because I'm not worried about everybody, not worried about the coronavirus and maybe it eventually kills me. Um, it was a joke because it just doesn't seem like the right decision. Um, you, this one size fits all to the globe just doesn't make any sense. Um, and it's a complete failure on behalf of the global leadership community. And these politicians need to be held accountable. Um, both our local judge here in Terry County, the local judge in, in, in Dallas, our, our state governor, Trump by administration, absolutely. Previous administrations, um, th these people have failed. Um, and, and you know, I'll be damned if it doesn't um, affect me to the point where I'm going to go out and influence the change to make sure this doesn't happen ever happen again. My son died from the coronavirus, as I've mentioned, um, but not in the way you think. Um, the human condition is not to be socially isolated. And, even, and I heard someone say, well, it's like summer for these kids. It was, it's not like summer for these kids. It's just not. Anybody says that's it's an idiot. This is not summer. You have parents who are stressed out because they lost their jobs. That's not like summer. You got kids who have no interaction with their friends other than through Fortnite and FaceTime. That's not like summer. You have kids who can't go go run off their energy at PE class. They can't get that one hug from their teacher that they needed. Um, there, there's social and emotional challenges beyond comprehension. And we're only gonna begin to understand the effects and it will be hard, incredibly hard to track and incredibly hard to prove my thesis um, because the network effects of how this all happened, the butterfly effect is, it's too complicated, but my belief is uh, that we are have a bubble, a social and emotional bubble that's about to burst, and it's been coming for a while. I think some of you may have seen on Twitter that I, my, my partner, my business partner in sports agency, Robert Jones Black, a good friend of mine, we both own his company, or I own a piece of his company, and um, I'm very honored to be a part of that. He's, 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 he's from uh, Bobby Jones's, Bobby Jones's great grandson. Um, we worked very close with that family to, to help the Bobby Jones brand. And through that, that, that process became very close with the Vander Holyfield. And now we work closely with, with the Vander. I got to know him well and, 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 his, and his CEO, Chester, at the Masters and spent three days with him and just an incredible, incredible human beings. Um, we had already been working on a foundation because we already had this concern that kids today do not have the, the tools to properly adjust socially, to properly adjust emotionally as they, as they move through preteen and the teenage years, all the way down to KK through 12. It needs to be taught, it needs to be brought in. Technology is evolving faster than, than we are as a species, than our, than our brains are, are able to handle this. Our parents are able to change. Our governments are able to, to adjust and corporations are able to build the policies in place. I know it's a little bit of a ramble, but but I just don't I just don't understand why we made the decisions we made, and, and it comes down fundamentally to me to just poor leadership. Um, and this foundation that that we're working with with the Vander, we'd already been like I said, we'd already been working with it for 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 a long time. And I remember when the virus started, um, this the, the, the Vander's foundation in this new program we have is targeted towards social and emotional. 
development of, of K through 12 and something that I'm very, I was already very passionate about. Evander is very passionate about. My partner, Robert Jones Black, is very passionate about. We all have kids. We all see the challenge. And when the virus happened, I remember distinctly calling Robert a couple months ago. And I was like, man, we got to launch, man. We got to get going. We got a bubble of, of social emotional tragedy about the burst. Um, and I didn't know that I'd be, you know, part of that and, and, and maybe even one of the first cases of that. Um, my son, the story behind my son, for those who want to know, back in December, he got a brand new monitor for Christmas. That's what he wanted. He was a big, big time gamer. And I got nothing wrong with gaming. Um, I got, I'm not a huge fan of the dopamine economy, but um, I was a gamer, um, but it was a different kind of game little Mario guy jumping up and down hitting blocks at his head not quite the same as the games today but you know I've rolled with it um, I, I like I like e-gaming I like I think there's a lot to be said about games if they're done correctly and, and, and parents can can have the ability and have the skills to sort of properly vet it and, and, and limit it and, and control it and all those things but uh but Hayden got this brand new Dell monitor, beautiful curb monitor. That was his big Christmas present. That's what he wanted to play Fortnite. He's an incredible Fortnite player, one of the top for his age in the country. And um, very proud of that gift. And, and that one of those wonderful for a couple of months, right before as the virus was starting. And back in February, like like I used to do when I got mad at uh, Mike Tyson's punch out or whatever it was, um, he got mad at Fortnite, turned around and chunked that controller over his head again just like I used to do and um, hit smack in the middle of that monitor broke it um, and we told him son you know you can't do that I don't care about the monitor but I care about how you react it's just you can't do that when you're not getting another one I'm sorry dude um, and, you know he negotiated and tried every which way to convince us talking to my what we call my, my dad we call him pee pee um, try to get him to fix it, and you can't fix those new LCD monitors, um, or not cheaply at least. And um, but we said, you know what? If you opportunity to, to learn a lesson, do some hard work of your own, do some more chores around the house, you treat your sister nicer, um, and maybe we'll talk about it. We'll get you one. And he held up his end of the bargain. Um, February, Mar March. He worked his butt off, um, did some things around the house, did many things around the house. Was, I could see it, just a wonderful change in how he treated his sister, which brother and sister is always fine. There's nothing unusual about that, but just learning. He was evolving. He was growing. He was becoming a man, 12-year-old boy. And, uh, you know, a week and a half ago, we had a wonderful day. Um, we're, me and Hayden were supposed to go get haircuts at my office. Uh, both of us were getting shaggy as can be. And um, my water in my well went out, and um, you know I needed help to fix it, so I called the smartest guy I know, which was my dad. Um, and I hadn't seen him because of the virus. I hadn't allowed him to go to work. I said, "You got to work from home, man." I was worried about my dad, just like everybody else. Uh, but he came over, helped me fix the well. It was a beautiful sunny day. We had a glorious time. Me, Hayden, and him fixing it. My dad even gave him a little mission that he had to watch something on the well. He was real proud of that. I remember Hayden coming up to me in the kitchen, and I gave him the biggest hug, and I kissed him on the hair. I hugged him tight for some reason. I didn't know it would be the last time I'd hug him. My dad did the same, and we talked some more, and Hayden went upstairs to his room, um, and um, my dad had to go. Uh, I had to take a phone call. Um, April went to go um, pick up a friend. You know, the social isolation, we kind of reached a point where we felt like it was counterproductive. So we're gonna let her have her friend spend the night and they were gonna get some food. And my dad left, April left. I went into my room real quick. Just my little daughter, me and Hayden were at home. I took a call, it took about 25, 30 minutes. Walked outside and uh, my eight year old daughter came down the stairs and said, Hayden hung himself. And I ran upstairs. Tried. I don't want nobody ever feel this, to see what I saw and to feel this pain. I don't want nobody. And as we found out, 
you know, we were in shock the first couple days. Just, just how, where did this come from? How did this happen? I'm a horrible parent. I'm horrible. And uh, come to find out that he had broke his monitor again. Broke his monitor again. And in a just a rash of, of emotion and probably anger at himself and maybe scared to get in trouble and embarrassed and all these emotions. You know, I went in his closet and rudimentally did something that I, I know he regrets. The kicker of it was, it was three days before his 13th birthday and he was so excited about that birthday. Um, so excited about his birthday. And he was going to get a controller, some new controller that was going to really make his game, Xbox game better, or his uh, Fortnite game better. And um, and so when he broke his monitor, I believe he felt like he ruined his party. He ruined his birthday. He already couldn't have a birthday party because of social isolation. Imagine that as a 12-year-old boy. You know, that's just, that's got to be. Those are the things you look forward to as a kid. And then you, then you, and you accidentally ruin it. Because you break your monitor and you aren't going to be able to use your birthday present here in a couple of days. And you can't go see your friends. Um, and you're, you know, you're stuck. You didn't have PE class to run it all out. And, you know, you know, all those things. Everybody's playing Fortnite across the country. Kids are staying up later than they are. So they're, and again, they, they have, don't have the skills. We as a society, me as a parent, us as parents haven't necessarily given them all the tools to, to properly handle. And in that moment... Um, probably not understanding the, the finality of the situation when the closet and got himself in a situation I believe he couldn't get out of um, and might have been, have been have been an accident my eight year old daughter saw some of it we don't know exactly what we'll let the counselors professionals help us on that um, but I know she once she saw blood <laughs> Coming out of his nose, she came and got me. She did the right thing. I don't think she even knew what, what was happening, but she knew blood. She came and got me. I ran upstairs. I didn't have my cell phone on me. Um, and I told her, go get my cell phone downstairs. And she ran downstairs just like an amazing human being and got it for me. And I, and I happened to have an AED, an automatic electronic defibrillator in my house. And I said, go get that medical thing out of the pantry. She'd never seen it and didn't know what it was. And she brought that to me very proud of her she was ready to she was ready to execute um and i said hey you go outside and go i called 911 by this point i said go outside keep the door open and wait for the cops um, wave them down she ran outside as fast as she could um one thing i'm just immensely proud of her about is during that moment about a year ago we had done some training at my house i'm a west point grad and um probably could have should have done more training but um, I said, hey, if there's ever an issue, you go run over to this guy's house. And if there's ever another issue, you go, or if you can't get him, you go run to this guy's house. And rather than just waiting outside, this little girl, eight years old, eight years old, eight years old last of September, ran to my neighbor's house, got my, my neighbor, ran to the other neighbor's house and got them. And as I was given CPR, I was on the verge of collapsing. Um, literally, I was on the verge of collapsing. I was praying to God just to give me the strength. I never knew how hard that is um, and out of nowhere and all my, my neighbors up here and help me take over and help me help us try to save him um, social isolation is hard enough for adults it's even more hard for our kids and um, I have been saying COVID killed my son I believe it but not how not how we think I believe my son would be alive today if he was in school. And that's not to discount the massive suffering around the world around this virus. Um, but I, high risk people who may have already, were already gonna pass in a year, elderly people. I, I love my grandma, I love my parents. But even me, I'm only 41 years old. I've lived a lot of life. And what have we done? for these next few generations. 24 million people unemployed. I don't know. But thank you all for listening to me. This is, uh, I need to get this off my chest. Um, 
Stay tuned for some stuff I'm going to do with uh, four-time heavyweight champion Evander Holyfield and Robert Jones Black, my good friend, um, and Chester, his CEO. We're going to we're going to do some big things. Um, I want to do some big things with Linear Labs. I'm now one of Hayden's soldiers, who is a soldier of God. Um, and what's a horrible tragedy? Um, I'll be damned. I'll be damned if, if I don't make this a little bit better. And politicians, for those of you who um, made the decisions you made, I know, I'm not, I know, I know you're not perfect, but there's got to be accountability. Um, and not, not accountability like I'm doing in a bad way. Accountability in what's, what's legally right and my, my rights as a citizen, which is to speak out, which is to influence change. And if I don't think you're a good enough leader, I can spend my pocketbook and my time and my effort to get you out of there. Um, to all my friends and family who have helped the Hunstables, both here and where I'm at today, at my dad's beautiful dad's house in Granbury, Texas. That's where it all started with Linear Labs. To all you in Granbury, to all my friends around the, the world, to my friends in Alito, Texas, thank you on behalf of the Hunstables, uh, my daughters in April. And to Hayden's friends, you guys are now a special group. And like I told you Sunday at the funeral, um, too much is given, much is expected. Um, and Hayden has given us an opportunity to do something great in the world. You are leaders, continue to be leaders, fight for injustice, fight for you know, the, 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 the smaller people in your school, the poor people in your school, be a leader. Um, bullying, let's not let it happen. If you hear something, say something, because conversations matter. You don't need to talk more. Parents, sit down with your kids. I've been very transparent about this, um, and I was torn on it. I don't want my son, his memory, to be the last mistake he ever made. Nobody wants that. I don't. But I want his memory to be that smile, I want his memory to be his heart, his dedication, his tenacity. Um, and I want his memory to be that he made a big difference in the world, a little flame spark around the world. I love you all. Thank you all for your support, all my friends, all my family. Um, and buddy, see you soon. Thanks, guys.